Howdy all of you delicious people. I'm here today to review Lucifer Season 2, Episode 5 and 6. So, it seems that in Episode 5 we have a urinal, I mean Uriel, that seems to be a character that was a waste. Uh, really the fact that uh, this actor was to get a job and was to get paid. Um, that wasn't a waste, but like, I was expecting this character to be in like a story arc kind of thing, but instead, like, I'm like, of course, this is just the, the, like the rush job of a certain show, <laughs> the rushing of everything just to give us a better episode six, maybe, uh, really episodes five, uh, case was actually pretty fun. I enjoyed it. Episode six, like like in the beginning like it was really interesting i'm like okay this sounds like a really cool uh like case but then all of a sudden slowly but surely then they have to do this stupid like well like because of these random murders we have to try to figure out how they can be connected and here's when we get to the like the seven degrees of kevin bacon freaking murders and i don't like that whatsoever <laughs> like I just don't like these kind of cases. I just think that they're garbo just because it's like, oh, like we find out at the end that it's really just some rando guy, whoever it has to be just to end this episode. Because really we have more pressing things going on. We of course have Lucifer and his having a bad day kind of episode. And we have uh, both Chloe and Maze trying to get along and then everybody else is just kind of fighting for their little scrap of uh, time on this episode after that. <laughs> just be like, well, wait, we got to we got to do something with Maze. Like he has to feel like uh, guilty about something. And oh, we have to uh, we have to use Dan a sprinkle here and we need to like have this character sprinkle there. And I'm just like, uh... I liked these episodes. These episodes were fun, but I could still complain about them. <laughs> I could still complain at the end of the game. Anyways, I think it's about that time to... Uh, yeah, um, one thing I liked about this episode is the guest stars in episode 5. Uh, I probably won't easily be able to pronounce all their names correctly, but Phil Lamar, the guy who is like the voice of uh, Jon Stewart, Green Lantern... He's like, my power, <laughs> Green Lantern's light, and, and all that. Like, yeah, like, that was so cool seeing Phil Lamar. And I also, like, remember him from Mad TV. Um, but yeah, that was so cool uh, seeing Phil in this episode. Uh, plus, also, we got to see Charisma Carpenter, who a lot of people know from Buffy and Angel. And, like, I've seen her, like... Uh, go on and do like quite a few guest stars and it's always kind of fun to just kind of see where she like comes out next if guest starring is what she really wants to do um like i saw her in supernatural uh and i thought that, that was really fun uh and then mark uh de Koskos, we can never pronounce his name correctly his last name uh he was on the crow series and i was like yeah I'm like hmm so cool. Uh, so with that said, let's just go on and let's go out of our way to say that it's just about time for me to just spoil these episodes because all I'm talking about is the episodes. So they're good, but still, in my hood of brain, I'm just like, mm, I can, I'm, I'm one over, but still, I'm just like, mm, I'm curmudgeon. I'm like, uh, I'm like Ebenezer Scrooge who is seeing like good times and holidays and he's like humbug mm, <laughs> this was a good time <laughs> that's that's how i feel about these episodes curmudgeon uh so let's go out of our way to just go on uh let's just go into spoilers uh so we can go uh into talking about these much more in depth so it's about that time to say spoiler time, spoiler time. It's about the time you to spoil these episodes. Let's go into them. Episode 6, the Halloween theme, the best part of the episode, Trixie's costume. Nothing else matters. It's all great. It's all chicken babies. Episode 5, what's going on in episode 5? So, 
In episode five, we, of course, have the aftermath of Chloe, uh, who was to possibly be this thing called dead. I won't say that often. <laughs> The, this thing called like I won't say that that often in this in this review. I know I said it a lot in some other review, but I was just like riffing and whatever. So Chloe is to go on, and she is to be involved in an accident, and come to find out, we have Uriel that is to have planned bizarrely in a Domino's like fashion to have all of this thing come into play because of course we have Uriel that is to place the skateboard in a right certain way for all of a sudden phrased mom to bump into the skateboard to all of a sudden be upset with her son and be disciplining her son to uh like uh, get all angry and like, you're ruining my life, man, and all this garbage. So we have the son who ends up opening this door, who lets this dog out, who uh, the dog goes and just runs into the street, uh, creating this wild accident where Chloe is to get out of her car, seemingly unscathed, but kind of f frazzled. So as we've already seen one woman like that already in this episode. So... <laughs> Uriel is to go on and just be like, hmm. So, Uriel isn't to go on and kill Chloe, but she is to uh, possibly put the thought in there that she may die soon. So, in this episode, we, of course, have Lucifer that is to go on and meet up with Chloe uh, and find out that she had gotten into a car accident. And so... That, of course, is to lead to Lucifer talking to Chloe and kind of dealing with Maze kind of moving in and all of her toys that she is to go on and have. And all of a sudden we have Trixie, who's kind of like, hey, guys. And they're <laughs> just like, yeah, we should probably just drop this into uh, this little suitcase because, yeah, probably shouldn't go on and have a kid be seeing any of that. So, we have Trixie, who is to desperately want uh, Chloe to drop everything that she's doing to have her read some um, some story. Because, like, Trixie is to be afraid that something could happen to her mother. And, and uh, what's going to happen if Chloe isn't there to read Trixie this story? And so, there's a whole thing about that uh, where, like, Chloe is to convince Trixie that she's going to be okay. And so they go off uh, to the races onto this case. So come to find out a uh, dead guy in episode is to be Wesley Cabot or Cabot, who evidently is to be a, uh, a multi movie franchise guy of a movie called Body Bag, which sounds really cool, right? Possibly just sounds like uh, like never back down or <laughs> just one of those titles where you're like, you're just like, what kind of movie is this exactly? So we have Wesley who's to be dead on his mats uh, at his karate dojo or whatever the heck that he teaches. And so they find him dead. <laughs> and so Lucifer is to immediately go on and know exactly who this is, Wesley Cabot. He's like, oh my god, like, this guy had, like, six movies of these body bag films. And, like, they go on and they find out that he's, like, living here in this in this dojo after he is to be found dead. And <laughs> the joke never gets not fun. So we have Lucifer that is, uh, of course, mentioning that, like, this was his, like, favorite action star, big fan of his. So... Even to the point where Lucifer wants to go on and, like, take a selfie with the dead body just so he can use it for his Instagram. And Chloe's like, no, that is just not, like, that is not a thing to do. So, come to find out, we, of course, have Ella that realizes that there is to be blood on this award that he had gotten, this, like, Nunchuck award 
So really they're going on and like, wow, like that's a interesting way to kill somebody. But we're really thinking about it. Like, I don't know how many times in several shows or movies someone ends up getting killed with some award that they had. Like it's always usually some award. Uh, so we go into this story and so they, they have it here where Lucifer is going to meet up with Uriel and after Lucifer is kind of done talking with Ella and kind of unbuttoning his, his shirt, thinking that he's going to get some, some with Ella and like you would have thought like if it would probably be Ella because it actually makes sense because like trying to like change Ella's ways or something like that but I guess never really happened and who knows what happens really with this character because I don't remember every single season but anyways pushing on so Lucifer at some point is to meet up with Uriel and so Uriel is to tell Lucifer, it's like, well, hey, like I'm here uh, to go on and like now say that you need to give up mom uh, or otherwise I'm going to be coming after Chloe within like the end of day. Like you need to come up with uh, with what you want to go on and do here. Like, are you going to give up? Are you going to give up mom? So Lucifer is realizing that time is ticking away. So forcibly Lucifer is to go on and continue on this case and hope for the best. Uh, Lucifer at some point is to meet up with Amitadil and Lucifer is to tell Amitadil, it's like, well, hey, like, how about you just go on and you just scare off Uriel? Because, like, you're the much powerful angel brother. So why don't you just go on and, like, deal with him? So, Amenadiel, of course, is go on and speak with Uriel, and what ends up happening is that Amenadiel, at first, is like, well, I don't have any power, but then it's like, well, you could probably just put on a show and scare the crap out of him. So, Amenadiel is to get back on his clothes, that, of course, to make him look uh, like he had done before in prior episodes. So... Menadiel has his angel gowned on and is going and facing Uriel. And so Menadiel is trying to s scare Uriel. And in my brain, I'm thinking, I'm like, you know what? If Uriel was sent by somebody, because it has to be somebody, right? Wouldn't they have immediately, like, wouldn't have Uriel known that this guy doesn't have power? That's just me. <laughs> like, what? It, like, do they just assume, like, I guess angels don't know jack crap nothing about anybody or can't sense anything? I don't know how many other, like, when Castiel didn't have his grace in, in Supernatural, they're like, oh, yeah, you don't have your grace, so we don't care about you. But he's like, well, shut up, ass butt, and, like, Psh, and, and and kill people. But anyways, so... We go on, we have a Minadiel who's trying to scare Uriel, and he's just like, well, like, you know what, like, a Minadiel before, like, you were not a man of act, you were not a man of words, like, now you are, so I'm thinking that there's something up. So, Uriel goes on and just, like, beats up his brother, and so a Minadiel is going back to Lucifer, and now... Like, Maze is, like, all, like, mad at Lucifer. is like, hey, look what you did. So, so we go on and we have Maze who eventually speaks with, and I, I know I'm not, to, I'm, I'm not doing the episode perfectly. I'm just going to go about and do certain things here within this episode. Hopefully everybody understands. Because Maze goes on and talks with uh, Lucifer's mother, Charlotte, I guess, at this point, and is to convince her to just like, well, hey, I think like you need to step in and you need to do something. And so like Charlotte is to step in and say like, hey, I'm willing to go back to hell. 
uh, like if anything it seems like the right thing to do because like Chloe's life is in the balance so and like Lucifer will always choose Chloe over his own mother it's just the way it'll be so so we go on and the case so at first they go on and they are to of course go to charisma carpenter who is jamie lee adrian uh to then go on and see if possibly she is to be somehow involved in uh maybe it was like a a whole lover spat kind of thing but come to find out like Jamie has uh, since moved on from Wesley and has uh, gone on to date a guy or be with a guy called Chemo. And Chemo was previously the weaponizer that used to be on this series. It's really cool how like Lucifer and Dan throughout this episode are going and reciting lines uh, from this series that we have never heard of uh i think that's so cool and then chloe's like yeah i just love like the like you two kind of connecting on this franchise even to the point where dan uh was to be such a fan of this series that he at one point was to uh miss out on certain wedding things so he can go on and see body bag six uh because it was a really vital movie for him to go on and see and and I guess, like, his wedding could wait. So, <laughs> considering, like, both Chloe and Dan, technically their marriage is still, like, I don't know if they even gotten the paperwork yet, but I guess it's still over, so Dan could go on and confess stuff like that. So, so yeah, so Lucifer and Dan are, are technically fans of the same franchise, and even to the point where they're trying to to go on and uh like get like eight by tens and uh and getting photos of these characters and so so we go on and we have lucifer who is to meet up with the weaponizer and come to find out like this guy has uh fell on hard times too to the point of him having to go and break people's legs and whatever uh, or or to hurt people to be this like loan shark uh for whoops uh for certain characters or for like the mob or something like that. Uh, so we go on into this story. And so Weaponizer is to, is to mention here, it's like, well, hey, there's like, there's no real hard feelings. Like this guy is to just kind of, uh, this guy's chemo, who is the Weaponizer is to kind of just move on and only focus uh, with being with uh, Jamie Lee, um, Adrian because she's his lighthouse and so like there's no ill will towards this guy so come to find out within this case they uh chemo wasn't to be the culprit to have killed of course the uh to kill wesley because he was at some comic book store doing this signing and and just trying to drive some sales on this merchandise and so come to find out uh dan was to find that it seemed that their lawyer had been uh stealing money from them for the longest time because i guess these guys were only getting 1% of merchandise sales, but they actually should have been getting 10%. So like, hmm, maybe there's got to be something with this lawyer. Maybe Wesley finally figured out uh, that he was getting uh, getting uh, like stuff taken away from him or money was being stolen. But come to find out there was another story. So... We go on towards the later part of this episode, and we come to find out that both Jamie Lee and Ryan, who is Phil Lamar, who is to be this lawyer that eventually Chloe and uh, Lucifer are to talk to in this episode, come to find out they're both in cahoots with one another. They're basically having an affair, 
And so Uriel is to go on and is to create this domino effect to have Kimo get out of his car while arguing with this construction worker to see both Ryan and see both Jamie Lee running off together in this restaurant kissing. And so Kimo's like, hmm, I'm going to go and get a gun and, and kill these people uh, for the betrayal. So Chloe is to go on and with Lucifer to eventually find out that these two were having this affair. And so we also have like a real fun episode with Lucifer consistently wanting to protect Chloe at every single like avenue of this episode where everything that Chloe is to do normally, Lucifer does not want her to do. Uh, where Chloe is to grab this meal or to go on and do any number of things, Lucifer's like, no, don't do any of that because <laughs> you're going to die. Um, and so like every bit of this, like we just have Lucifer who's trying to protect uh, Chloe from possibly any kind of death whatsoever. And I'm just like, <laughs> okay, Lucifer. Um, like she ends up grabbing a meal from some gas station or something somewhere. It's like, no, you don't, you don't eat that either. <laughs> it's just, so we go on and Lucifer and Chloe are, it gets to the point where Chloe is just like, well, hey, like I'm going to go on and let things happen the way they're supposed to happen. And Lucifer is like, well, fine, but buckle up. <laughs> so, but we go on and we have Chloe who is to be out of the barrel of the gun of Chemo as he is just distraught by this affair. But it seems that Chloe is to figure out the words to tell Chemo to put the gun down. And so come to find out Jamie and Ryan were culprits of killing Wesley. Um... Because people were thinking that that Weaponizer was the was the killer because there was fingerprints from Chemo on this Numchuck award. But come to find out, Dan was to realize that there was two sets of awards, so maybe they switched the award and there's actual fingerprints of someone else on this other award to try and so like there is a whole thing uh about them like going on and confessing to like their uh them killing off wesley in this this film both ryan and jane lee were saying that they were to be the killers that ryan of course was to say that jamie lee was to come up with the award and the blood and that Ryan just kind of went along with a lot of it. So, so yeah, both of them end up getting arrested. And so, uh, so Chloe and like Lucifer are kind of done with their case. They figured out who the murderer was. And I enjoyed this episode. It was an enjoyable episode for most of the point. Um, so now we have Uriel that is to by the end of day like want to like one or the other like what is going to be the the deciding factor here so lucifer is having like charlotte come in she's like i'm i'm gonna give myself up like it's fine and so lucifer is like no like i'm gonna go and i'm gonna talk to to uriel so we go on, we have Lucifer, who's talked out with Uriel, I guess, at this, like, kind of church-like environment. So, Lucifer is talking to Uriel, and Uriel is to weirdly say, it's like, oh, well, if I touch this key, then Chloe will die for sure. <laughs> and I'm just like, what the f is this? What kind of garbage is this? If I touch this piano key, Chloe's gonna die. <laughs> What a goofy thing is that? But then, not only that, but then, like, Uriel is to whip out this, like, Asriel blade. And I'm just like, okay, sure, whatever weird goofy concoction you just want to whip out right now. So, 
it seems that Uriel's plan is to use the Azrael blade on uh, on their mother to wipe her out from existence. Because Uriel is to mention that uh, their mom is just going to talk and persuade God to forgive her. And, like, it'll probably be this all over again where mom is just going to go on and is to go back to hell and this is going to start all over again. And so, like, you might as well just kind of wipe her out of existence. I'm like, no, like, because everybody has, like, a second chance or everybody has, like, everybody shouldn't have, like, a permanent permanent like punishment thing like everybody should be able to decide what their fate is technically instead of just wiping them out of existence so we go on and we have lucifer who is to decide that he is going to fight uriel and so lucifer tries to fight uriel and uriel is kind of like taskmaster where he has to kind of get used to lucifer's like pattern of fighting and then he can possibly beat him so uriel is to fight lucifer and and really uh take lucifer down and you would have thought if anything like charlotte would have came in here and fought uriel to have this all kind of go away uh, oh, we also had the one moment where Charlotte was with Maze, and the one kid was, like, barking like a dog, and then Maze was like, bah! and then, like, the kid stopped, and he's like, oh, I'm sorry. Mm. So, because, <laughs> uh, like, Charlotte was having a hard time trying to figure out all these, like, this, like, uh, this family stuff. So, we have Charlotte and Maze, and so, uh... And that's what I would have thought, like, Charlotte should have, like, fought for her own life, considering she should probably be more powerful than Uriel is, but mm, I guess that's just me here. So, after Lucifer is to kind of get, like, kind of, uh, like, kind of taken out, not exactly taken, but, like, to the point of him just kind of, like, out of the fight, Maze jumps in, and, he, and so Maze starts fighting uh uriel here and so uriel didn't want to use the azrael blade on lucifer but he's fine to do it with maze so that way they have an even weaponry fighting thing i'm like yeah whatever so <laughs> yeah whatever so maze and uriel are fighting and so while they're fighting of course we have at some point where the blade comes flying out the azrael blade Lucifer is to grab on to the Azrael blade and stab into Uriel and kill him off and wipe him out of existence. And Uriel, before he is to die, is to whisper sweet nothings to Lucifer. And then, like, that's how the episode is just to kind of, like, finish off. With, of course, episode six being a uh, episode that kind of deals with... Uh, with Lucifer in the aftermath of killing his own brother. So, uh, with that said, let's get into episode six. Uh, so, episode six, like I said, episode six is a uh, is an episode called Monster. And so, in this episode, Lucifer is to be uh, kind of very drunk and disheveled through most of this episode. So. In the uh, beginning of this episode, we have Lucifer, who's kind of just all over the place, like at this bar, just throwing himself out at a number of women, uh, grieving in a horrible fashion, just because like he's he wants his punishment uh, for killing his own brother, because he is to punish a number of other people, so why can't he be punished? So... In also the beginning of this episode, we have a zombified wedding where of course uh we have two corpses i mean a broom and a, a bride uh, a groom and a bride are getting of course a wedding where everyone is to be zombies or dead or whatever and all of a sudden we have two of these wedded people to be killed off via a sniper gun I'm like, okay, like, that seems like a weird way to to start off here. So, 
they go on and Chloe is to make it to this case because Lucifer is just very distant right now. He just doesn't really care about cases. And so when Lucifer finally does show up, he's very disheveled and looks like he just like woke up like two seconds ago. So Lucifer comes in and he comes in this case and he's oh, like, oh, devil's cake. Oh, and so Lucifer is going on and just like he's making out with the bridesmaids and uh, trying to figure out all these possible leads, uh, which is to uh, eventually lead uh, Lucifer to possibly think that uh, there is to be this Wes Bentley guy who, or no wait, um, No, 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 no. Um, let's pull back a little. Uh, oh my god, where is the picture of him? Uh, <laughs> let me pause here for one second. Okay, this is interesting. Uh, guy with no face. <laughs> so, uh, come to find out this bride is made. Let's correct this. Uh, is to say that there was a ex-boyfriend at this wedding. And so it seems that they go on and find this ex-boyfriend and come to find out that this ex-boyfriend, Lucifer just kind of goes in and is to basically break off these doors and is to do his own interrogation and to try to get information out of this guy. So... You're thinking that Lucifer is torturing this guy, punishing this guy, all kinds of horrible things. But instead, no, he's not doing that at all. And come to find out that this guy is just, like, crying and in tears simply because, like, he was to confess everything right away. That he ran off uh, from that wedding just very upset. And come to find out he was to go to the same place. Uh that uh this killer was at because like there was some evidence of some uh items uh that could possibly lead to the killer so eventually all this is to lead to chloe going on and uh seeing this uh freddy's dutch oven where Lucifer is to go on and just start ordering things because <laughs> he doesn't care. He's like, hey, could you give me like two orders of that? And like, like this place is hopping. So all of a sudden we go on and like Chloe is questioning Freddy here. And like I'm kind of forgetting all about like the, the Halloween stuff. But we'll get to that in a second. I'm forgetting about the Trixie stuff. But so I just want to get this stuff out. So, Freddy is to go on, and he, of course, is to start talking, and like, well, hey, I don't know why, like, anybody would uh, be coming after me or anything like that. And so, all of a sudden, we have it to where this uh, sniper is to go on and shoot Freddy and to kill him off. So... We now have, of course, where Chloe's to realize where the shooting is coming from. So she runs off to then tries to find this bullet casing. And she's like, okay, so now we have to go on and figure things out. So in this episode, we, of course, have Linda, who is talking to Lucifer at some point, like asking, it's like, well, hey, Lucifer, it's like, it's not like you to cancel an appointment. Like, are you okay? And Lucifer is just like, well, hey, like, I, so I canceled an appointment, like I'm just going on and just having fun and so on. And so Linda's like, well, hey, like, like, if anything, like, because Lucifer is to mention that he is to lose a brother. And so Linda's like, well, like, this would be the perfect time for us to have a session. And so Lucifer's like, no, I'm just, no, I, I don't want any, uh, no. So to really just kind of push Linda off. And so Linda's like, well, okay, there's nothing I can do. So 
we have Amenadiel who's also grieving for the fact because Amenadiel is to technically blame himself for uh, Uriel's death because if Amenadiel would have still been an angel and still had his powers, Uriel would not be here. Amenadiel would have been able to scare him off. And so Charlotte is to take Amenadiel to, of course, where Uriel's buried and is to really have Charlotte tell Amenadiel, it's like, well, it's not your fault that he's dead. It's technically mine. So, so we also have uh, Trixie who calls Chloe and is to tell her that like, hey, Ma, like, um, Maze had scared this babysitter away and I need to go out and trick or treating. And so how am I going to do that? So Chloe goes on and is to make a deal with Maze. So like, hey, if you could just please go on and take my kid trick or treating and like, don't do this and don't do that. And Maze is like, sure, sure, sure. Like, I'll go on and I'll do it. So it seems that Trixie is to go on and be this princess for Halloween and she doesn't want to be this princess for Halloween. And so Maze is just like, well, what do you want to be? So <laughs> Trixie is to go out uh, with these kind of like martini glasses on her head and all these kind of cool things. And she's to be the president of Mars. And so she goes on with this kind of like space like costume and like it works. It looks really cool. And like, yeah, it's homemade, but who cares? It's pretty cool. So Trixie goes on and is to get this candy from this guy and then Trixie's to kind of just be upset because uh, Maze doesn't have a costume. And Maze is like, well, technically I have this. And then so she shows what she really truly looks like. And we have Trixie's like, oh my god, we're going to get all the candy. And then they go off uh, trick-or-treating. So, uh, so the case, really not this good in this episode. Uh, so... We go on and like Lucifer is just really throwing his weight around in this episode. And so like Lucifer is going on into this vending machine and like he can't get like this certain candy out of this vending machine. So he just he just opens it and just takes whatever and is to just throw a hundred dollars into this vending machine. And so like. Like, we just have Lucifer who's like, man, you're really out of control. Like, Chloe is wanting to just, like, you know what? Like, you should just be sent home. And the thing where this finally gets to that point is that Lucifer is to go into this hospital to try to get these records. Because they're figuring out that there might be a connection between these two people from some, uh, from the couples that are that were involved that might have something to do with some trial. And so we go or some some doctor uh, medical thing. So we go on and we have Chloe who is uh, to eventually go to this hospital to get all these medical records and Lucifer just steals all of them and is to just uh, do that by hugging Dan and taking his gun and his badge and lucifer just kind of hands them these records and chloe and dan are like wait a minute like how'd you get these records and he's like i just flashed him your badge and dan's like oh my god you stole my badge and he's like well yeah i could have gone just whipped out this gun and dan's like oh my god you stole my gun and so this just finally leads to like Lucifer just desperately wanting to be punished. And so Lucifer just punches Dan and Dan doesn't do anything. He doesn't press charges or anything. And so Chloe's like, I've had it with you. Like go home. Um, because if he won't talk to Chloe, cause Chloe is just desperately asking him. It's like, Hey, like, like we're partners. Like, why aren't you like say anything? Why aren't you talking to me? And Lucifer probably feels like he can't talk to really anybody simply because, like, no one will understand him. No one will understand his world. So 
Lucifer eventually is to just kind of be out of it and, and kind of do his own thing. So Chloe is to go on and track down this killer, and it's a guy named Wes, uh, Wes Williams, uh, who is to be uh, this kind of uh, ex, uh, ex-police guy who was to be in the sniper division, Wes Williams. So... They go on, and so they're thinking that this guy has some tying into these certain doctors that are going to get killed soon. So Chloe is to meet up at this certain uh, doctor location and is to ask, like, where these couples are. And so it seems that the wife of this uh, doctor is to be going and getting coffee. So... Wes is to gear up to shoot this woman and Lucifer gets in the way and he's like, come on, Mr. Shooter, <laughs> like, come and get me, come on, <laughs> like, shoot me. And so Wes continues on to dodge uh, Lucifer all around, trying to scare Lucifer away. And he's like, come on, <laughs> like, come on, you can shoot me, come on. And so they never he never goes on and shoots this guy and it just gets to the point where chloe's to figure out where his shooting is coming from so that way she can arrest him so we have of course where lucifer is to finally ask this guy it's like well hey like why didn't you shoot me and wes is to go on and say it's like well because like you're like you didn't deserve it like i was going after people that deserved uh what they had gotten and you weren't one of them so i wasn't going to kill you and so lucifer is like oh so you didn't want revenge you wanted to be like punished because supposedly wes was to find out that the woman that he loved was to had was to have had something wrong with her while Wes was away on business. And so when he came back, she ended up dying. And so Wes was to seek revenge for um, this pos these possible doctors uh, going on and killing her. I think that's where the story weirdly headed. Doesn't really matter. <laughs> it, it just, like, this episode, as far as the case goes just wasn't that good it just i don't know how many times i've probably said that already but it just um wasn't um no so lucifer and chloe just finally have it out uh and chloe is just telling lucifer it's like well because uh lucifer is to finally just talk to chloe and say that maybe lucifer needs to go on and speak with linda like if lucifer can't talk to chloe maybe lucifer needs to talk to linda maybe this is the perfect time uh to deal with what he's dealing with so lucifer is like okay like i think like this is the right decision because Lucifer, from the early part of the episodes, was to mention, like, I don't know how many times he's probably said some metaphor or some something where it just kind of turned around uh, on him for every time he goes to see Linda. So, and maybe it's just kind of a waste of time. So, Lucifer is to finally see Linda and talk about what's going on and... Linda is just kind of sick of these metaphors and these, like, this charade or this act that Lucifer is possibly putting on. And Linda is finally at her breaking point where she's just like, you know what, like, like, I, like, I need to see, like, your true side. Like, I need to really see you, not this persona you're putting on or these metaphors that you're, like, hiding behind. I need to truly see you. And Lucifer is like, well, I guess it is about that time now, isn't it? So Lucifer goes on and shows 
uh, Linda his true face. And Linda's like... And <laughs> so Lucifer's like, oh, that's that was the... That was the desired action that I that I needed. So Lucifer just kind of walks out of this appointment room and he like looks back and she's still just like, <laughs> I'm just like, okay, this will be some interesting next episodes. Um, because every time that Lucifer is to tell everybody like, hey, I'm Lucifer, I'm the devil. Like, and no one ever believes him like you would have thought like lucifer would have come at some point sooner to just show everybody that he's really and truly lucifer by showing them his face like he did with linda because when really looking at it no one has ever believed him they're like yeah 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 like you know and i can really use you on this case but like i don't believe that you're the devil and like i'm just sick of you kind of dancing around all these this weird stuff that doesn't make any sense uh <laughs> So, you would just think that, like, Lucifer would just be like, hey, Dan, fly, hey, Chloe, fly. Like, you would just think that he would just be showing everybody that he's actually Lucifer, so they finally take him seriously. But more than likely after that, they would go and, like, freaking pitchfork him and all kinds of stuff and try to kill him because the devil. And so, Chloe used to make her way home uh, and notice both Trixie and Maze are both passed out uh, on the couch watching Nightmare on Elm Street. And so, like, Chloe used to go on and just kind of, like, throw some blankets on them and just kind of, like, like, ah, oh, like, how nice. Uh, so, yeah. So, like, that was some a lot of fun in the episode, but again uh just uh there's like not the bet not the perfect episode but still um close uh to where i was like i don't even understand the case at this point because it like am i wrong like because i was trying to figure out the, the the connection so like the 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 three people or the no wait the the two people that they killed because the husband the zombie husband was still alive and he had just gotten shot that wasn't like a killing blow and he was getting hauled away and so the wife ended up getting killed and freddie ended up getting killed and then they figured out to connect those two people to these doctors because Wes's doctors were to have like gone on so like so it was like yeah so it was just a weird goofy like connection okay let me know in the comments below if you have a better like connect understanding of, of of episode six than I do as far as the case went because I was just like man this is just like I don't like these kind of cases ever um just give me the like the villain at the end of the episode I don't like the 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 connecting of dots kind of things where it's just like really just seven degrees of kevin bacon to just like like oh well blah like here's here's the villain at the end of this like i i don't know i i, I always liked uh the the cases where you go on and you already question the person then you find out oh yeah that's the the killer after all i liked those better um but anyways we have to have these weird and wank, wacky cases uh, where we're getting so close to the killer, uh, and then it finally gets revealed who it actually is. Oh, yeah. So, with that said, I think I'm just going to go on and get out of here so I can get this to be a shorter video. Uh, let me know in the comments below how you feel about this season so far. Uh, maybe you like this season a little bit better than previous uh, episodes. Even though I complain, I remain to say that this season is probably better than the first in a lot of ways. Um, but I don't know if I really complained about season one all that much, but still, um, yeah, I'm just going to get out of here. We'll, we'll go on. And if there's anything that I didn't say, or if there's anything that I went on and like said incorrectly here, then I can just go on and just rebuttal it in the next review whenever that happens. I don't know, like... Really, uh, it all depends on views consistently for Lucifer. It seems that I 
keep getting views for these reviews, then I will keep doing them. Because uh, really, when it comes down to it, like, the main reason why I was kind of just hesitant um really about continuing on with this series is because views just started to slow down but like that's that's easy because when really looking at it uh there was a lot of times when really looking at those reviews i'm like yeah i can understand <laughs> why uh the slowing down but still uh i didn't really think that the there was going to be much of views uh like the further and further we go on into shows anyways, just because it just happens that way, uh, regardless if I were like, however I was to approach it. So with that said, goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody.